I have one amazing guest for you today. I'm so excited to have Mrs. Jess Ward. You might remember the name Ward. Yeah, Jess Ward is the wife of my debut episode of Leading Our Own Way, such a long, long time ago now. Uh, Jake Ward was my debut episode. He's he, you are. It's actually kind of pointless doing a bit of an intro because. All you guys, I'm sure, have watched Jake Ward's. If you haven't, please go back because it's such a powerful story. His story around the breast cancer and, and his fa losing family members to that horrible disease, raising money over $100,000 of running around Australia. Um, and then his wife, Jess, was sadly diagnosed um, after the run that he'd raised such so much money for. Anyway... It's just an unbelievable chat. She delves deep into the journey of her breast cancer, the diagnosis of it, the integral parts of what she went through. It's one incredible journey, so don't go anywhere. Please tune in. I can't introduce her properly because it's connected to Jake's story, and it's just her own way of being vulnerable and open and wants to share this message to our to those many people out there that will go through something very similar or have been through something very similar. I hope you can all take something from Jess. There's a lot of positivity and her perspective on life is absolutely phenomenal. Enjoy today's episode. Sit back, take it in. There's a lot to take in. We'll see you in 21 seconds. Welcome to Leading Our Own Way. I'm your host, Andrew White, and this is the podcast that unveils captivating narratives of resilience and personal triumph. This podcast is for anyone seeking inspiration and insights on overcoming life's challenges. Follow and subscribe, and then we can lead together forever. Evening, Mrs. Jess Ward. How are you? I'm good, thank you, Andy. How are you? I am great, and um, it's it's great to see you, and um, I'm so happy that you've joined us on Leading Our Own Way. Oh, I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, have you noticed, I, f I, I full named you, and um, <laughs> <laughs> I full named you because um, it's been a while since uh, your husband, Jake, appeared on Leading Our Own Way, but he was the first guest of Leading Our Own Way, and it was such an honour to have him on. Oh, that's awesome. I think he had he had so much fun chatting to you. He likes talking to everybody. So <laughs> he's, think... a, he's a talker like me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad um, thing. <laughs> for those that did catch the episode, or for those that didn't catch the episode, he's also known as the Aussie Arm Wrestler, and he has one amazing story outside of the Aussie Arm Wrestler and, um, and the journey he's he went. He went on with him. It, well, I don't want to spoil it. People can go and watch the episode if they need to. Um, but his journey um, with some of the things he went through connects alongside you. And anyone that did watch the episode will understand why you would be here today. I'm not. I'm not going to get into that just yet because that's for us to delve into. Um, but it was such a powerful story. And whoever's watching here today, Jess, was. There'll be loads of people that can draw from you learn you know whether it's personal strategies from you whether it's just men positive mental uh, mentality from you and and i guarantee there'll be loads of people uh, you probably don't feel like there's loads of people going through it once you're going through it yourself um yeah, but I people do. you know what i mean um i do but people will take um something from you and and, and if and if they've not personally been through it themselves, they'll know at least, you know, a few people going through it themselves. And if it's not them, it'll be somebody they work with or somebody they've crossed on the street. You know what I mean? Like, there's just so, oh, it's just, yeah. So yeah. I think that's why it's powerful that you came on and, and we discussed it a while ago with Jake and I was like, yeah, we've got to do it. We've got to do it. Thank so thank you. you for coming on. Oh, it's um, honor. Thank you, Andy. So let's let's delve right into it then where how do how do we do this Jess because mm -hmm. you've been on a bit of a journey in recent years mm. and where where are you at right now what how are you leading your own way where we're at right now and how we're leading our own way well it's a it's a, it's a big question isn't it but look, mm. we are we're in a great place right now we are 
honestly living the dream. <laughs> not just nice. Jake, not just myself, but us together. It's, mm -hmm. yeah, it's everything we've wanted. Uh, we're very lucky to be where we're at. We've got we've got two beautiful daughters. <laughs> mm -hmm. We have Zadie and Jovi, and so two under two. <laughs> it's uh, hectic, but it's it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, never definitely. dull. And yeah, we're just we're busy, but we're happy, and we're healthy. Uh, uh, and, and you know, I'm glad you said the word healthy there because I think that's a key point here isn't it and where it ties into having these two beautiful girls that you've got uh zadie and, and jovi health plays a massive part in our story um well how healthy are you now mentally let's right let's now. go with mentally how are you mentally. how are you mentally going at the moment with especially with yeah. the journey that you've gone on yeah okay good question um i feel i just feel so so happy i don't know how to explain <laughs> i'm you I'm look in it great place. <laughs> thank you andy thanks yeah no i definitely i couldn't i couldn't complain about a single thing honestly um you know every day like yeah as a, as a mum you're tired you're, <laughs> you're exhausted you stress over little things but uh yeah there was like a little saying it's like um, no matter how stressed you are, never forget how blessed you are. And I swear that yeah. that's where we're at today. You know, you can have these little little moments each day where you're like, oh, my gosh, why won't my kids sleep? <laughs> but other yeah. than that, we are in such a good place that, yeah, I just why? beaming. <laughs> why, why would you consider yourself blessed then? Yeah, um, I think it's just everything that I've, I've ever wanted personally is – is mm -hmm. what I've got right now. You know, I've always hoped for that perfect marriage, which I've got. Mm -hmm. I'm so, so lucky to be married to Jake, honestly. And we've got, you know, we've got our little dog Zeus. We've got our two beautiful girls. So I think it's it's what we've got and what's happening in our life that makes us so lucky and so happy right now. Yeah. Where do you think it came from with um well let's let's recap then before we go into your childhood yeah. because i think that's where it stems from but anyone who has watched the episode of jake you went on a bit of a journey in the last few years and uh, you were unfortunately diagnosed with breast cancer yes and yeah. it it was we, we will touch on that journey but we'll leave that to later on in the episode but jake's story well Let's go back to briefly, just briefly, when mm. you met Jake, there was a bit of a story. Let's recap people who are joining us uh, on this story. Uh, let's recap where Jake was at when you met him, uh, outside yep. of how you met him, because we'll touch on that as well. But let's touch of what Jake's journey was on, uh, Jake yeah. was on when you met him. When I met Jake, he was actually, yeah. um, he was preparing to, to move to Canada to live in Canada yeah. um, mm -hmm. and he obviously wasn't expecting to meet me at that moment in his life and I also wasn't in that right place to to meet him and, and to have that relationship with him at the time. So uh, yeah, when we, when we met, he was he was on his single single man journey. <laughs> he was he was headed to Canada. He was um, planning an incredible run. His amazing run from from Gold Coast to to Mel to Melbourne or Cranbourne, and mm. yeah, we we met on on a night out. <laughs> do you want me to go into how we met? <laughs> I mean, we will do later. But why yeah. why was he doing such a big run? So he was raising money for breast cancer. So mm -hmm. the irony there, but <laughs> he yeah, he had massive. lost. Yeah, if obviously people may may or may not have seen Jake's episode with you, Andy, but. He had lost his his cousin. He had lost his aunties. He'd, you know, it was close to home for him. So he was he was doing incredible things. He was out there raising, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars for breast cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah what an amazing thing he was. He was in a, a good place, despite maybe not feeling like he was in a good place. If that makes sense, he 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 hadn't found love. He hadn't, you know, he hadn't found me and I hadn't found him but he was still he was still doing some incredible things at that point in time yeah yeah he was doing amazing things and he was trying mm -hmm. to turn such a negative 
part of his life into a positive, I think, based on, you know, what his mother said to him about why don't you do some good for the people in the world and turn mm -hmm. these negative experiences into positive. And I think that's probably why you two now have such a good perspective and you don't seem to take anything for granted. You, you live in the present moment. And uh, I think we, we discussed this quite a lot with a lot of guests. Do you believe people change their perspective and mindsets based on when they hit a crisis? when they've been through a crisis. Oh, would yeah. you agree? I would 100% agree. I think people definitely can, can grow and change in, in that way. But I think mm. also sometimes thing, things happen to people that already had that mindset, if that makes sense. I, I believe Jake and I were always glass half full people. We're always optimistic. We're always very, you know, <laughs> bubbly mm. and, and happy people. But you definitely, uh, you see things differently, even though you still are who you always were you mm. you start to just like you said you hit the nail on the head you you don't take things for granted 100 percent. yeah yeah absolutely well let's let's go from the let's go from let's go from the cancer the when you were clear i know we're going to go back and go through the journey of it um because that's really powerful but let's go from the point then when you were cleared from cancer because i think we need to join put fill in the puzzle part of why you know, the, the, you don't take anything for granted, especially with the, you just mentioned all these typical parent, you know, being tired every day and it's exhausting, right? But you, you, you guys tend to let it roll off your back and put it to one side because of your perspective. I think perspective for you, uh, for me, my key word with one of you, if I was going to associate with you guys would be perspective. You seem to have perspective. And I think we, we lack that in the world at the moment is perspective, understanding different points of views and, and, and things like that but what's your since you've got the clear of cancer how long has it been now since you've been cleared with cancer uh, of, of yeah um I'm actually cancer still in my five year uh oh, yeah. wait period if that makes sense but yeah. they they these days aren't, aren't so quick to say you're in remission like they used to say but they do hope that you have those five years cancer free because yeah. it declines every year that passes you you have less and less percentage of a chance of it reoccurring. Um, so where we're at now, we're about four years out. So we're only a year, a year away, a year or two away from, am I? <laughs> I'm doubting it now. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're getting closer anyway. So yeah, we are at that point of, of it getting less and less um, risky and that's an amazing feeling on its own. And yeah, yeah, you're right. Perspective is, is key. We, we didn't always, um, like we're always happy, bubbly people, but we definitely, um, see what we have and just, we're just so grateful. Just so, so yeah. With, with the cancer, um, were you told at any point? Uh, and I'm only asking this because um, we've got, we've, I've, we, you know, I've, there's people in the world I've, I know who have had cancer and been told they can't have children. Yeah. Um, were you told at any point you couldn't have children? Yeah, we, okay. So Jake and I actually, we had quite a bit of uh, trouble getting to these beautiful girls that we have now. We, we didn't always have perfect fertility. We had a lot of, a lot of uh, struggle there anyway. When we got married, we just assumed like you're going to, you know, you're going to get married, you're going to have, have kids and it'll be just like yeah. like all your friends and all your family and you'll just try for a baby and you'll fall pregnant. But that wasn't the yeah. case for us. So we, we had quite a few years of, of trying and frustration of why, why aren't we falling pregnant. Then the cancer happens. Then they tell you you need to be uh, five years cancer-free, as you said, Andy, to then have a go at your IVF. You know, that's just yeah. a, a maybe. And then if the IVF doesn't work, you know, maybe in another 10 years you you could adopt. And, and gee, is that a hard pill to swallow? Because it's, it's all I've ever wanted is to have kids. So to hear that, that's hard. Yeah. Mm. You, you, yeah, because well, there's different rules here in Australia regarding the adoption. Is that right? Can yeah. you explain that one for me? Yeah, different different states within Australia have different rules and, and Australia in general, they're quite tight on their rules. So, um to apply, you have to you have to be health, deemed as healthy and and in a good place in your life to to be able to look after that child that you adopt. 
So from yeah. what I'd heard and read and researched, it was very much uh, open adoption in Victoria, where we're at. So, you know, if you were fortunate enough to adopt a child, um, you potentially could have to give that child up, you know, back back to their biological family. And you also have to include their family in their upbringing and their culture and all of that. So, mm. yeah, it's not an easy thing. If you actually were able to adopt, it's, yeah, that on its own isn't, isn't is there, an easy is there, is there a clearance y- y- amount of years from cancer that you, before you can adopt? Did you say it was yeah. a particular year? I'm pretty sure I'd, I'd been told it was 10 years. That's it's a long wow, time. Wow, that's insane. Walk, that so badly. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like I love yeah. kids and I've always wanted kids. So to, to hear that, you're like, wow. Oh gosh. So not only have we already had six years struggling to conceive, now we've got cancer. Hopefully that, you know, comes like turns out okay and then and then you've got your five years mm. for your IVF and then IVF on its own is such a challenge. And then ten yeah. years of adoption um processes. Like that's it's a long time <laughs> to wait. Did that what were you feeling during that time? Did did you go into any? Because you are such a positive person, I can't. Mm. And that's we've again we've discussed these topics on other with other guests. When people appear so positive, you just assume everything's okay. Did mm. you just, did you go into any darkness in that point? Um, I'm trying to imagine you in the office or you you researching on the internet, going, God, I can't, yeah. I can't adopt for ten years. What, yeah. Where do you? How do you go to work the next day? How do you have breakfast? Do you know what I mean? Like, what yeah. did you no, go into right. a dark space? You're right. Absolutely. And. And also my work being teaching, like I'm a primary school teacher, so I couldn't even escape kids and have a day yeah. not thinking about it because I'm then working with, with these kids every day, all day. And, you know, it's just in your face. All your friends are pregnant, all your, you know, everyone around you has got what you want so badly. And so, yeah, yeah you do, you do spiral a little bit. Like I didn't, I wouldn't say that I went to a dark place. I, if anything, Jake, Jake is my absolute rock. Like he's the person that kept me, sane kept me stable kept that goal alive um that dream alive of having kids like if there was ever a moment where i started to doubt it like you say it happens you can't you can't never slip even as positive as you could possibly be you're going to have thoughts mm. you're going to have moments yeah. where you do question things or doubt things so yeah there were there were times where i'd start to be like wow maybe i won't be a mum like what what will that what will that mean <laughs> you know how how yeah. will i swallow that like that's hard so yeah jake jake for one was a huge part of that staying alive that that dream and positive thinking you've got to you can allow those thoughts to come in but you've got to just be like you know what yeah maybe that maybe that will be the case maybe we won't have kids but also maybe we will (laughs) and let's just keep on hoping because i'm never gonna i'm never gonna stop trying for something that i want so badly (laughs) yeah yeah do you think do you think positivity played a role in it? Because of join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.